So, welcome to another video, and today I just wanted to talk some about uh, Vega 64, maybe a little bit about Vega 56, and just let people know that, hey, these things still exist. So, when these cards came out, they they were kind of like impossible to get. They were just low supply, they were hard to find. And then when they became easy to find, they became really expensive, because all the, the miners bought them up. But now, they're cheap, they're on eBay, they're super cheap, they're like 300 some dollars, maybe 400 for certain models. So they're pretty affordable now. So we're gonna do some game benchmarks, and some overclocking, and at the end I'm just gonna talk about it. So the card I have here is actually a Strix card. And for the most part, Vega cards are blower style cards. So they're not the best thermally, but there are a few models where you get these triple fan designs. Um, this card does have two 8 pins. It has some uh, voltage read points at the back of the card. It has a little dip switch towards the front that turns it from quiet mode to performance mode. And all that really means is it just disables some power states and makes it so the fans don't turn on. But this card does also have a zero fan operation mode, so that means it doesn't feed any signals to the fan, so I'm not exactly sure why you would uh, need a switch for that. Let's look what this Strix card can do in gaming. So we're going to do 1080p 4K, we've got a 9900K, and uh, yeah, talk about overclocking afterwards. So those are the numbers at 1080p and 4K. So I think it was something like nine, 10 games. To give you a rough idea, this card does really well at some games and really awfully, horribly bad at other games. Um, so like uh, Tomb Raider and Crisis, just completely unplayable at 4K on this thing. I'm not exactly sure why, because some games at 4K did perfectly fine, great, even good. Um, but I don't know, some games it just doesn't play well. So this card stock does come with um, about a 50 megahertz overclock, 50, 60, something like that. Doesn't matter too much because, well, the way boost works on these cards, so it takes into consideration your, your, your power and how hot your GPU core is. And then just kind of clocks it to wherever it, it wants to clock it. So to start off uh, stock, this thing actually exceeds uh, 300 watts stock just out of the box so that 50% uh, power target isn't really going to do anything uh, so that's the maximum you can uh, set for the power limiter and stuff like afterburner is plus 50% it's not really going to do anything with this card maybe a reference card would be it would do something with but this one it doesn't so we got to get rid of the uh, power limit on this card so instead of like hard modding or or anything, uh, Vega cards actually, you can use the power play table. There's tons of guides online how to do this. So basically what we want to do is set it to some absurd number that we're, we're never ever gonna hit. Uh, so I'm just using like 800 in this example. And then the power slider we also can modify to something like 300%. Uh, it doesn't mean the card is gonna use that. It's not gonna use anything near it. It just means that uh, it's not gonna throttle because it says there's too much power going to the card. Try and set the P states close to each other. So in Wattman, or at least the new version of Wattman with the newer drivers, you can actually set a min and max P state. From my uh, testing, it doesn't actually do a whole lot. 
Maybe it'll give you a few megahertz. I don't know. I couldn't see it actually doing anything noticeable. Uh, but you can just set like uh, PSA7, PSA6 as uh, min max and try and get the frequencies closer to each other than stock. That will actually get you more consistent frame times. And of course, you should overclock the memory. Um, this card, I got a good 120 megahertz out of it just from the HVM. But having said all that on air, it's still, the clock speeds are all all over the place. They still jump, they still go up and down, and you can get a lot from this, but you're really mostly gonna see consistent frame times increase. So like your 0.1 and your 1% lows, they're just gonna go up. So I did a few benchmarks after overclocking this thing, and honestly, average frame rates were basically the same, maybe one lower, one higher. And, and low FPS were quite a bit higher. So mostly you're getting consistency out of this. On water cooling, it's different. So if you actually want to overclock these cards, I would recommend you just throw a water block on them. It's, you're gonna have a much better time. So you just kill the power limit, throw a water block on these. You're gonna have a way better uh, video card, honestly, than an air cooled. For about 320, 350 dollars or so, you can get a Vega 64, right? And it performs really good in games. Not so good in some other games, really good at some other games, right? And of course, you can just always lower your settings, get higher FPS, whatever, right? Um, I would say if you want to get this card and you want to overclock it, you really should get it. Just put a water block on it. Just just put a water block on it. Because um, even with this triple fan design, it's super fiddly to overclock. It's like, no matter what you set, it just it never actually reaches what you set. So it's super fiddly. But if you're not afraid of fiddling with it and messing around with it, maybe taking a, a few days and just seeing what you can do with it, it's actually a pretty good, decent card. Now, if you put a water block on here, you're gonna get way better clocks and it's just gonna perform way better. And there's a lot of stuff in the power play tables that you can mess with. And it, it's really a nice card if you just wanna mess with your settings to see if you can get higher performance or optimize it or, it's really nice for that. Um, it's a power hog. This is 500 watts on an air cooler. So not the best for efficiency and you're gonna have to make sure that your power supply can actually take that on the 12 volt rail because some can't even though they're seven, 800 watt power supplies. But if you're not afraid of messing around with it and tuning it, and it's, it's, it's actually a really good, uh, really good buy. You can get some good performance out of it. But like I said, I would really recommend you just, no matter what version you get, just take off the air cooler. It is so much better on water, just, to, just take off that air cooler. Even these triple fan designs, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just this design. It, it, it just doesn't seem to be that great. It, it's better than a blower style, don't get me wrong, it's, it's worlds better than blower style. But it still doesn't really, I think it, it's either the, the cooler, or the stupid little boost uh, thing that I got going on with it. It, it doesn't it doesn't work very well. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of headroom for overclocking with even this cooler here. And uh, I even put it to 100% fan speed, like super loud, sound like a server right next to my ear. And it still really didn't give me much of anything. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And this was actually the first time I had a chance to play and mess around with the Vega cards. And uh, just because they've been like hard to find or too expensive, and now they're under $400, so I have an excuse to go buy one and uh, play with it. And maybe I'll make another video, just, uh, I don't know, on this card. Uh, this one's kind of interesting because it has all the stuff you need for like extreme overclocking. So, uh, like uh, voltage read points and uh, stuff like that. But as far as I can tell, there's no way to actually uh, get over like 1.2 volts on the core. So I don't know. Maybe I'll do another video overclocking this thing. Maybe not. I don't know. Well, we'll find out. So until next time, bye.